All right, welcome back everybody. It's Jill with Go English Coach. We have our last advanced grammar one class today. So we are wrapping up everything that's supposed to be covered in our grammar one class. And then we will begin advanced grammar two starting next week. So be sure to check our June calendar and get those events synced up with your calendar. You can actually just subscribe to the whole series of classes so that the calendar will show up on your phone and give you reminders. So that's a really nice feature. Also, if you have not um, been able to attend classes one through seven in this uh, for this, this course, Advanced Grammar, feel free to go to the calendar and go back and start at class one, class two, class three, and go work your way through it. I really do try to teach in order. It's just kind of a natural part of how I like to teach. Um, I don't really pull in things from other places too much because I like to go in order and build on what we've done. So for example, today we're gonna to be looking at present perfect and comparing it to simple past, which we were doing last week. And on Tuesday, we did um, simple past and past progressive. So being that this is an advanced class, I do move fairly quickly. Um, so if this is, is going too fast for you, or maybe you're not, maybe I'm speaking too quickly, please do give me feedback um, in the form of an email or um, you can always message me or comment on the video if you're watching it on the replay okay and just let me know hey you know you're speaking too fast or I didn't understand this or even better is if you show up to the live classes and then we get to work together and I can really build the classes um, based on the students who are in the class and I then will know you know, how fast to go. And it's just, a, it's such a better experience when we're in the class together. Plus, we get to be together then. All right. So what I'd like to do today in class eight is do the unit two review. We'll do that here at the desk. We're going to look at present, present perfect and present perfect progressive. Those examples are up here. Um, and then we will do a couple of things here at the desk again um, and work out some examples and exercises and, and then we'll wrap up for today. Okay, so let's come on over here and we'll get all set up to do our unit to review. You guys should have had this in the last class. So if you've had some time or you have not done it, um, you can take, you know, go ahead and pause this and then just take your take a moment to um to watch it or to do the activity so this is our unit to review so we are looking at part a here where we've got seven sentences and we're going to choose between the past simple past or past progressive okay so i first Let's see, number one, I first met, I first was meeting my wife in 2002. So remember our little graphs, right? So if this is a time line and this is now, okay, to have something, this is something starting in the past and ending in the past and it happened for a period of time. This is what we'll call past, progressive, okay? And a singular event that happened and finished in one point of time is simple past, okay? You're gonna forget that, we'll write it up here. Okay, simple past and past progressive, past progressive. That's our little chart, okay? And you know, this is a strategy that I do a lot of times when I was younger and in school and had to take tests, I would always put little notes on my thing because I had so much information in my head. Maybe I had studied, um, but I, I would get to the test and be nervous that I was going to forget it. And so I would just write all my stuff up in the corner and then I could relax a little bit, take the test and be like, oh, I wrote that down. It's right here. Right. So that was just a strategy that I used, especially in math classes where you had to remember maybe a formula or a series of 
um, steps that to get, you know, to get you to an answer. So um, that's just a little trick that I use if that might help anybody there. Okay. So I first met, we don't say was meeting because we didn't, you know, unless you're talking about, I was meeting her and then something happened, you know, other than that, it doesn't really make sense. Okay. She worked or she was working at the museum the day I went to see a Picasso exhibit. So what is going to give us a little bit more information here is that something was happening and then you know, this happened. I went to the Picasso exhibit. So that indicates to me that it's this past progressive. Okay. She was working at the museum the day I went to see a Picasso exhibit. Okay. Um, I saw her as soon as I walked into the room, I was seeing her as soon as I walked into the room. So we don't really use, remember those non-action verbs, you guys, or stative verbs, non- action, right? Like, no, understand, love, like, all of those we don't really use in the ing forms in any progressive tense. Um, it's not that we can't, it just, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And I mean, so you'll hear people doing it. Sometimes it's more to be ironic or funny. Okay, so I saw her as soon as I walked into the room. That's what we're going to see. She had long, dark hair and a beautiful smile. So have is also on this list of words that we do not typically use in the progressive tenses. So she had, okay, we're not going to use the progressive tense there. While I had a question about painting, I went over to her speaker when I had a question. So also with while, remember, we use while when we're talking about a period of time that the action happened for. Okay, so it's it's usually more with the present progressive. Okay, when is more for a point of time, and for that we're going to use the simple past. Okay. So when I had a question, I went over to speak to her. So progressive is like with this, and that's a period of time. We're going to use while when it's a point in time, we're going to use when, okay. The whole time she was talking, I thought or was thinking about asking her on a date. Okay. So this, this part right here indicates it's a period of time like this, right? I was thinking, okay? I was thinking about asking her on a date. Um, when I left the museum, she gave me her phone number. She was giving me her phone number. When I left the museum, she gave me her phone number. Let's say that, okay? Okay. Good work. Okay, so this next part, like again, if you guys have not done this, feel free to pause this and then do the work. So you're going to complete the conversation with the simple past or past progressive, and put those in the. And you'll you're going to be using the verbs that they give you down here. So what blank you do when you first meet Ed? Okay. So we know it's a question because it starts with the word what. We know the word, the verb here, and with the question, we don't change that, right? And why not? Because we use the do auxiliary in the past tense. What did you do when you first, or what, what were you doing? How about that? What were you doing? That's even better. When you first met Ed. Okay, so, so something was happening, doing, and then met happened right in the middle. Okay, so we make our little chart. We'll have the, this is now. So something, what were you doing when you met Ed? Okay, we blank for a bus. We started to talk, and as they say, the rest is history. We were waiting for a bus. 
we started to talk. We were waiting for a bus. We started to talk. So they were waiting. And they started to talk. Okay. Oh, Carl and I blank in the school when we blank English. Okay. So Carl and I met, simple past tense, when we were studying English. Okay. I blank him as soon as I enter the room for the first day of class. I noticed. Noticed, also pay attention to the pronunciation. Noticed, noticed, okay? Um, as soon as I entered the room on the first day of class. All right, boom. Okay, it was 2005, I studied, so, oh, sorry. I'm just jumping right in there. <laughs> we're gonna find six mistakes in this paragraph, okay? So, and we're gonna circle them and correct them. All right, so I it was 2005. I studied French in Paris while I met Paul. Um, so, so let's say I was studying when I met Paul. Remember up here, we talked about when is a point in time. When is connected with the simple past. This is simple past and it's, it's a correct sentence, so. Like me, Paul was from California. We were both taking the same 9 a.m. conversation class. After class, we always were going to a cafe with some of our classmates. Something is wrong here. We always went. Okay, because it's something that was done and it's in the past and it didn't happen for a period. Maybe they went every day. That is still simple past. We, you can say another tense that we can use is the used to or would tense. So something you used to do like this. So if this is now, okay, you did it in the past, but you did it many times. This is used to or would. Okay, so we'll talk about that in the next couple of classes. All right, so let's see, we've got one, two, three, we need three more mistakes. After class, we always went to a cafe with some of our classmates one day, while we was drinking cafe au lait, while we were drinking cafe au lait, Paul was asking me to go to a movie with him. Paul asked, asked me. Now that is a difficult one to pronounce. I know we've talked about this before. Asked, asked. That is the pronunciation. Well, actually the A is the a, asked. Okay, it's asked, but most people, most native speakers just say ask. ask. He asked, he asked, actually. It sounds more like this, asked. He asked me to go, okay? There are other versions of that. Some people say axed. Um, some people say, yeah, axed is probably one of the ones that um, most people say, I'm trying to think of other. So just be prepared to hear other versions of that, but the correct way is asked, okay? After that, we started to spend most of our free time together. We really got to know each other well, and we discovered that we had a lot of similar interests. When the course was over, I, I don't see any mistakes in there. Do you guys? Okay. When the course was over, we left Paris and went back to California together the next year we got married. Okay, so did we find six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, did we find more than that? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, perfect, okay. Okay, great. So that kind of wraps up simple past and past progressive. Let's go up to the board again. Okay, let's get started here. Um, so we've got uh, the next, um, vocabulary or not vocabulary, grammar section I've got is doing the present perfect and the present perfect progressive. So when we talk about what these tenses are, um, and we've talked about this a little bit in, the, in previous classes. So if you need to refresh, please go back and do that. 
Um, so simple past, right? If we have, uh, this is our little timeline, the simple past, and this is present here. Simple past is just a one point in time that is started and stopped in the past. One point of time, okay? Uh, present progressive is, excuse me, present perfect is something like this that starts in the past and continues to today. So, um, or it might have ended in the past as well. Okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see. I have built a house. Um, let's see, so it started in the past and maybe it didn't get finished. So I have built a house that is something that is done. Okay, I have lived or I have been building a house. This, boom, this is present, started in the past, and it's continued to today, and it's probably gonna go into the future, okay? And it, we usually here discuss a period of time with that as well, okay? So let's just take a look. Um, and I'm looking at my notes here in my book. So for those of you that have joined before or if you have not, this is the book I use, Focus on Grammar 4 for the advanced class. Um, so let's see. So we use the present perfect. We use, so when do we use this? So this is, we use this in describing something, that's my abbreviation for something, um, that happened and completed in the past, okay? All right. Um, when we use present perfect, we can use this in a lot of different situations. And we've talked about um, when in, for example, in English, we, we talked about this before, but in the present tense, we don't actually use the present tense as often as other um languages. So I, I've studied Spanish. And so I, I'm familiar with at least a little bit at an introductory level um, that in Spanish, they use the present tense to talk about things that are happening in this moment, right? So we always have to kind of not only study how we form the, the verb, right? So in this case, we're going to learn how we do this. Um, we have to also use when to use it, right? And so for example, in English, we don't use the present tense. We only really use the present tense to discuss things that we do every day or with, with regularity or, you know, um, often kind of a thing. Um, but we use the present progressive more. Um, we also use present perfect a lot. Okay. So when we use present perfect, it's something that started in the past, but maybe, let's see, something... Okay, but might not be finished. Okay, so you can say I have lived in uh, Montana for 10 years, okay? Um, I can also say I have been living in Montana for 10 years. Now, the question then is, is what's the difference between those two sentences? Is there a grammatical difference? I have lived in Montana for 10 years. That means, let's make our little chart here. Okay, so if that means 10 years ago, 
Um, this is now. I started, this is 10 years ago, okay? I started living in Montana 10 years ago, and I still live in Montana, and it's possible that it will continue into the future, okay? I'm pretty sure I'm not moving from this state very soon, <laughs> okay? So I have lived in Montana for 10 years, but um, so it started in the past and it has an indefinite ending. The ending is not, we don't know when it's going to end, if it's going to end, okay? So it started in the past and continues to today, okay? And notice how I used this. If I say for, I can use a period of time. So for, we're going to use for and since. These are your two main, when we start giving a time stamp to it, we're going to use for. We're going to use for to talk about a period of time, okay? And we're going to use since when we have a point in time. What does that mean? A point in time. So we could say, for example, here, a period of time could be um, 10 years, two weeks, nine months, etc. Okay, those are just examples. Okay, so that's a period of time. It's, and then from here, a period of time, right? It means, it's like this, this is a period of time. A point in time is just one point. So we're gonna say, um, I have lived in Montana. We could say um, since, oops, that is not since, since 2013, um, since uh, August, right? Since last year. I've lived here since last year, okay? So those are points in time. So that's when we use for and since, and we really don't mix those up. They don't, they don't sound right if you change them. Okay, let's see. What else do I wanna make sure you guys know? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we form these, okay? So I'm gonna just erase this, hopefully you guys have all of this. So what are we doing to form these two different, you know, um, tenses here? So this one and this one, what are we doing here? So we've got a couple things going on. So I, I like to use um, formulas, okay? So we've got the subject, right, that's here. We've got a form of to have. So we've got either have or has. So this is in present tense. She has, they have. And then we've got the, the participle. This is a participle. So in our last class, you guys, so we're talking about this one here right now, okay, in this part. In the last class, we, we looked a lot at the past tense, uh, right? So we had like, come, that was the main verb or the base, I think we called it base. Um, this is just an example. So we had base, we had past, and then we had participle, right? So here's where we start using the participle. So the pa the base form of the verb is come, past is came, and the participle is come. This is an irregular one. So a regular one would be like um, travel. We use this word a lot. The past is traveled, right? Just ed. And yeah, the participle is traveled, okay? This is not always the case, but this is an this is a regular. So this one is irregular. This is regular. Okay. Um, 
And again, if you guys need to review those and go back over it, go back to the previous classes from last week, class um, five and six, we talked about past tense. And then we did a whole list of all of those irregular um, the verbs in the past in the participle, okay? So um, for example, another one to be, the past is was or were, okay? And then the participle is been, okay? So that's what we did here, been, all right? So what we're using for this here is the participle, this part, which sometimes looks just the same as the past tense, and sometimes it does not. So you really need to practice those, okay? So this is our formula. I have built a house that is something that started in the past and is now completed, okay? Um, great. To, let's see, let's do a couple more of these. Um, I have lived. So here's one that is, no, it's, it's a regular verb. So it's, if we're looking at the, um, I just need a bigger board. <laughs> okay, so here's the base. Let's just keep this over here. Base, past tense, and then participle. Can we just remember that? So that's live, past tense is lived, and the participle is, you guys can see that says lived, okay? Um, what do we have? We have B. I'm sure we're going to need that, and then been. Okay, we have, I have lived here, let's use since or for, since, you always need something. I have lived here since 2000, okay? So you need something beyond this. You need a time piece, a time frame here. Let's see, a couple more examples. Let's see, she has read the book, okay? Here you don't need to have something um, like a timepiece. So she has, it also you could say she's read. So in this is the, the verb here is, this one is tricky, you guys, read. The past tense is the same. The, the spelling is the same in all three. The present tense or the base verb is read. In the past tense, the same spelling, but the pronunciation is red, right? Red, okay? And the same for the participle. She has read the book. She has read the book, okay? Or she's, remember the pronunciation for this is she's, this is S-H. If you guys don't know these IPA symbols, please go ahead and, um, go through our um, pronunciation and fluency course because that really is helpful when it comes to um, learning the international phonetic alphabet and improving your um, speaking and listening, so your comprehension, okay? Um, okay, how about this? I've been to the museum. I've been there, I've been there. I've been to the museum, okay? Great, okay. And then let's let's add on to this and look at this, this present progressive. So I have been, and then um, let's see. Um, to use this, pre the present perfect progressive, you use have been, and then another form of the verb. So let's see, everybody's got all of this. Let's just keep that there. I have been trying. Um, I have been trying to get a hold of him. So what do we have here? So we've got the subject. I, I is the subject right here, right? And then we have the form of have. So we've got have or has, 
Okay. And then we've got Ben. Okay. And then we have trying. That's the last part here. So we've got the main verb with, so I-N-G. And then you've got the rest of the sentence, okay? I have been trying to get a hold of him. Um, so you've got lots of verbs here. This is your um, main verb. These are auxiliary verbs. You've got one auxiliary verb, two, the main verb, and then you're also talk of to get a hold of is another verb, okay? I have been trying to get a hold of him. What does that mean? It means like to contact. Like maybe you're trying to call somebody or maybe you're emailing or texting, but it's set the what you are implying is that this person is not answering and is not getting back to you, okay? Okay, right. Okay, let's do a little bit of practice. Sometimes I think that these grammar presentations can be very difficult. And then when you start practicing it, it's just like so much easier, okay? So let's move over to the desk and work on that. Here is the list of statements that we are going to use this piece of paper to kind of do. So we're gonna to have to go back and forth a little bit here. So bear with me. Um, Okay, so it says, look at Nikisha's job application. So she's applying to be an editor, the date, um, her first name, address, address, education here. If you expect income, she's got more information, current job. Yes, no, can you? Okay, so, and then she's got a little bit more information here at the bottom. Okay, in your own handwriting, describe your duties and what you will find the most satisfying in this job. Okay, so. We are going to answer these questions based on this. So I'm sorry, but we're gonna go back and forth a little bit because I don't believe I can fit both of them here. Let me see if I can try. I think we got it, guys. Okay, so number one, it says, we're just gonna have to move it down when we get down to number 20. Um, so it says, complete the personal officer's notes. And we're gonna look back for, it says, use the correct affirmative or negative form of the verbs in parentheses, and then the simple past, present perfect, or present perfect progressive. So simple past, present perfect, or present perfect progressive. Sometimes there is more than one correct answer. So that's always a good thing to know. Okay, so number one, I have interviewed, so this is the person who is interviewing Nikisha. I have interviewed Nikisha Pollock for the editorial position. She blank, the verb is apply for a job on, on November 20th. She applied. This is positive. So it's a positive past tense. Okay, simple past. Let's do that, simple past. Okay, she blank at the uh, road field examiner for a long time. She Let's look at her. So the word the word is work. So this is her job. Um, oh yes, look at so this is the date, November 10th or November 12th, 2010. And she has worked at the Broadfield Examiner since 2002. So she has and she still works there till today because it says to and she says present. So she's presently still working there. She has worked at the Broadfield Examiner for a long time. Okay, she blank several articles for that publication. Let's see, she, so here in your own handwriting, describe your duties and what you find most satisfying in this job. I am currently a crime reporter for a daily newspaper. I write local crime news. I, especially enjoy working with my supervisor. Okay. She, let's see. She wrote several excellent articles for that publication. We don't really know that, except for that she wrote, she did read or uh, wrote, um, she, I mean, she's a crime reporter, so she wrote excellent articles. It doesn't really say. Um, yeah, so we can just say she has written 
So something that started in the past and then every day, maybe she wrote one, several excellent articles, okay? And because she's still there and still writing those articles, we can say has written because it continues until now, okay? She find that job when she blank, a college student, she found that job while she was Okay, um, she attended two schools of higher education, right? She actually, uh, so she, yes, she's got two, yes, so she has two schools, Claremont College and Ohio State. She attended two schools of higher education. She began, right, because it's just a one time that you begin something once, and received her BA there. So her BA, yes, that is true. So we're gonna say she received her BA there. Then she go on. So that is like to say to continue. She went on to Ohio State University. She took classes in two different departments at Ohio State. She did this and this, so that is true. She started a master's program in urban studies. That is not true. I expect to receive my MS in political science. So her master's is in, let's see, she, let's say, didn't start a master's in urban studies. She got a degree in urban studies, though. She did. She got a a de degree after a year she yes she decided after two years she decided to study political science instead she uh let's see has she she has not received her master's degree yet she hasn't received her master's degree yet she Let's see, um, lived on Willow Terrace from her whole life, almost, yep. She, does she live there currently? No, so she lived, that's just simple past. If she still lived there, we would say she has lived, right? Uh, for the past five months, she has lived. And I like this, because it says for the past month, it shows a period of time. In our recent conversations, the company graphologist recommended asking the applicant to come in for another interview. Our re in our recent conversations, the company graphologist recommended, I don't know what a graphologist is, <laughs> asking the applicant to come in for another interview. Um, he says that in question eight of the application, Ms. Scope Pollock blank left space between some words when she mentioned her supervisor. He says that in question eight of the application, yeah. left a space between some words when she mentioned her supervisor. Okay, we're going to say left space. He feels that this means she probably hasn't told her supervisor, hasn't told her supervisor. So see what they're talking about here? There's like space here and space here. So the the officer who's um, interviewing her is reading this application very closely. <laughs> he feels that this means she probably hasn't told her supervisor yet about looking for a new job. When Mrs. Scope Pollock answered question eight, she, slanted so to slant something those are slanted lines these are straight lines so she moved her like that she slanted her writing to either the left or the right the graphologist explained to me yesterday that this indicates that she has a clear and independent she is a clear and independent thinker she so the graphologist explained to me yesterday so yesterday is what tells me that this is just simple past yesterday that this indicates that she has is a clear and independent thinker so 
there is all of that for you guys. Okay, so if you want to take a look at that and just kind of go back and forth, there it is. And um, there you go. Let's see if I can get that all in there. I don't think I can get this full thing. 20 of them. Yeah, so there's a couple at the bottom there. Okay, there's that bottom part. Okay, great. All right, guys. So like I said, we are going to be moving into the um, Advanced Grammar 2 class starting um, next Tuesday. And actually, our June schedule is a little bit um, different because there, I have a lot of travel planned. We have some things going on with family and stuff like that. Um, so just be sure to check the schedule. And as I've said, I will be doing... Um, I'll do eight classes in June for Advanced Grammar 2 and eight classes in July for Advanced Grammar 3. Um, I do very similar things in an Intermediate Grammar as I do in um, Advanced Grammar. So feel free to take both of them or all of them or, you know, come to classes where you want more help. Um, and I will just, all you know, you'll always have access to the calendar so you can go back and watch those other ones. Don't forget about pronunciation either, because that is one of the areas that people really do struggle. And it really does help if you can um, come to a class and really focus your time on that, you know. Um, all right, everybody, have a great rest of your day and I will see you very soon. I will be teaching the final pronunciation and fluency class. No, tomorrow is class seven and next Tuesday will be class eight. OK, bye. Have a great day.